welcome back to A Better World. This is your host, Mitchell J. Rabin, and we're very glad you're joining us again today. Today we're going to have another very interesting show. We have with us, from Salt Lake City, Carol Tuttle, who is the author of this book, Remembering Wholeness, and another book on wholeness. She's got also a very interesting website, which is interactive in nature and enjoins you to connect and actually go through really interesting processes, emotional clearing processes. And that's going to be the subject of today's show. Carol has done a tremendous amount of work in the domains of energy healing, clearing, and she'll be speaking about that from the point of view of her own life and the process she went through, which is rather dramatic, to the place that she is now. And, uh, well, it's very interesting and you'll see. Hey, Carol, how are Hi. you? Good. Good to have you on. Thanks. So, what is it that got you started in this entire journey? I mean, you were basically a Mormon housewife. Pretty much. Living your <laughs> life there, raising children with mm -hmm. the standard Mormon values mm -hmm. and the like. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really active. So, still uh, am. You know, yeah. That, that was and you all. still are. That, and, yeah. you know, I was really applying what I'd chosen as values and principles to live my life by, and just little by little. It was really the after the birth of each child that the, the... And you have how many children? We have five. We have four biological, one adopted. And by after the birth of my fourth child, my um, biological youngest son, I think my world just fell apart, literally. And it's not like it was like, oh, it was just fabulous, you know, the night before. It was just little by little <laughs> as those demands were put more on me. My ability to stay ahead of what my internal world, my eternal mess basically that was brewing inside, the emotional problems that I had, a lot of uh, what I would really classify now as generational patterns in my family that I was now starting to live and, mm. and have to deal with in a really heightened state just came down on me. You mean emotional Huge. patterns that you were able to identify from your depression, own parents? Yeah, depression. <clears throat> My mother was um, diagnosed with severe depression right after I was born. My grandmother was, um, her mother had severe depression, actually tried to end her life. And we don't know, I, I sense even before that, there were several generations of women that had faced real chronic depression. And that was probably, as far as a diagnostic label, what was I dealing with? Depression would have been the most obvious problem. The uh, tons of rage. I was just a very angry, out of control woman, mm. raising four small children at the time. <laughs> and so, what I had learned basically, and how in I reality it, that is, uh, if I may say, is a fairly standard, pro, you know, yeah. situation. Well, the, I mean, con the conflict much more common than anyone really acknowledges. I think so. And uh, the conflict for me was I had lived a very doing obedient life because I thought it was all about what I did all the doings. I was a high achiever. I was a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. So my interpretation at the time was if Virgo? I... Virgo? No, I'm Capricorn. Oh, Capricorn. But, Another you know, one. There yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. I really thought if I had uh, done all these right things, I was supposed to be happy. I didn't understand my commitment to my internal self and what I needed to know. It really started me on my journey. Mm -hmm. There's a scripture that was always very... For, uh, very front and center for me is that man is that he might have joy. And I thought, that's a joke. <laughs> God's really cruel and he's taunting us. Yeah. But I, I see, it's like I took God, I went nose to nose with him and just said, I don't get it. I've, I've, by how I've been taught and how I understand it, I've done this all right and I'm miserable. I don't even want to live. And, and I'm messing up my kids. Mm. I knew that. I knew. The biggest issue for me that was my motivator was I am literally causing my children to live in a dysfunctional environment that's going to now, you know, they're going to go on and do the same thing and worse. And it's going to spill over into society. Oh, yeah. And uh, I knew rather that. than being major contributors or yeah. minor, what have you, yeah. they will be, you know, kind of more negating things. Exactly. I, I knew it was just yeah. passing it on down and it wasn't yeah. right. And, I, I wish I could say my marriage was a motivator, that, you know, my love and affection for my husband at the time, but there were so many issues with that. It's, at the time, we, um, we stayed together because we had this joke. We'd, I'd tell him he'd have to leave, and he'd say, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving our kids. And I'd say, well, I'm not either. 
so neither one of, one of us would move out. <laughs> and so we ultimately stayed together when we didn't By think default. we yeah when we didn't think we could. Yeah. And now it'll be 25 years soon in a few months, and it's it's so right. It's the right relationship. Mm. It's we've been we were meant to be together.